Thanks everyone for joining us for today's episode of The Capitalist Investor. I'm Mark Tepper, joined by Derek Gabrielson. D, what's up, buddy? Hey, Mark, how are you today? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm excited to talk about Joe Rogan today. Oh, yeah. You know, that's that's the news du jour, right? <laughs> um, you know, Joe Rogan, the podcast king. Oh, yeah. Inspiration for, for the little guys like me and you. Exactly. Although you're not little, you're like 6'5". <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about what's going on with Joe. I mean, right. you you know more about this than I do, but I did read the headline today. Uh, that he is, he struck a deal with Spotify for his podcast worth, I think, north of a hundred million. Yeah, there are estimates at this point, but everyone seems to be saying a hundred mil. It's not bad. Uh, a pretty nice little payday. Spotify, you want to pay us? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take some of that cash if you're just throwing it around. Um, but no, I mean, it, it, Joe Rogan is—he's got like the number one podcast. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm seeing it's like uh, 190 million downloads. Uh, per month last year and um, 8. Uh, 8.4 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. 8.4 million subscribers. I think we have 8.4. <laughs> hey, and we appreciate all 8.4 <laughs> of, of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, I mean, he's legit, right? I mean, yeah. he's, he's able to, you know, flex his muscle as it relates to which platform he's going to take his podcast to. Yep. Now you said uh, prior to this move to Spotify, the podcast was the platform he was using was YouTube. Correct. And it looks like he had some beef with YouTube. They were censoring his stuff or something like that. Yeah. That, that's pretty much uh, the big headlines that, that came out of this is um, I'm not sure if it was his stuff specifically, um, but he is, he is friends with, um, uh, what's that guy's name? The, uh, Alex Jones, who is like, um, super, super, like as far right wing as you can get. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, that's not why we're here. Not what we're talking about. <clears throat> um, but when that guy comes on the show, it's pretty entertaining actually. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's the, it's the, if you, if you, haven't heard about it, you know, basically conservatives on the internet, um, basically are saying that their message is getting, uh, censored or they're coming up with algorithms that are not allowing people to see their messages, their posts, their, their, uh, podcast posts. Um, and it's been a whole thing for, for a long time. That, that's undoubtedly happening. Oh yeah. There's no question. I, I can get blown up by Trump haters on Twitter mm -hmm. and those posts will not be taken down. They can say whatever they want to say and those posts will, be, yep. will never be taken down. Mm -hmm. Now you go the opposite direction and they get censored. I, yep. So I a hundred percent agree with that. I, I've seen it happen firsthand. Yep. No, no doubt about it. So, um, and when you're big and successful, like Joe Rogan, he basically, you know, said, I'm going to take my ball and go home. I want more control. Good. Good <laughs> for know? him. It's yeah. America. Yep. That's the beautiful <laughs> That's thing about America. <laughs> Capitalism, right? Yep. You give me a bad deal, I go elsewhere. Exactly. And, you know, that's that's what he did, and he's got the power to do that. So, um, you know, I thought it was a, a very interesting uh, topic to talk about for really two reasons. You know, number one, obviously, the name of the show is The, the Capitalist Investor. So um, is, is capitalism at its finest. Um, you know, he, he started from nothing. I, I watched the clip today. Um, he was actually on uh, Tom Green's internet show in 2006 or seven, I believe, something like that. So it's uh, it's a little depressing to look at. You know, it's only 13 ah. years ago, but it looks like a completely different world. Oh. Uh, and just, Tom Green was a weird dude. <laughs> yeah. Remember that movie Road Trip where he's about to eat the mouse? Yeah, yeah, he's a, disgusting. He was a, a niche actor. That's yeah, for sure. yeah. <laughs> career fizzled out pretty quickly yep which yeah. is probably why he was doing internet tv in 2007 but hey man uh, we're basically doing that right now <laughs> but he made it cool he he was one of the founding fathers um so joe rogan went on on tom green's show and basically took a look around and said hey man this is awesome you know where there's there's no regulations we can talk about whatever we want to talk about we don't have to worry about the sponsors not uh, liking a, a certain joke that we tell or something like that. You know, this is giving us freedom to number one, be funny. You know, they're comedians. Yep. Uh, and number two, say whatever the heck they want. Yeah. So 
so that was pretty cool you know back in 2007 um that's where basically the the idea came around for for joe rogan and, and he took it and, and he ran with it yep and turned it into you know one of the most successful uh mediums out there yeah um but what was but what i thought was um particularly cool about what he does is he's willing to talk about anything yeah anything at all um the last one that that caught my attention he had um the the ufo guy there was like a ufo documentary out yeah and uh he did like you know 90 minutes with this guy who uh you know claimed to work at area 51 really (laughs) yeah um i watched part of it i mean it's it's a pretty compelling story no kidding oh yeah it's uh, yeah. something you should check out. I'll have, I'll have to I'll, check I'll it out. I'll come up with his name here in a second. I'm surprised someone hasn't taken that dude out if he's... Uh, That's what I'm saying. If he's leaking <laughs> legitimate secrets, man. But if you want to talk about Netflix show, I know his show's on Netflix, too. Um, the UFO guy. The I'll, UFO, okay. I'm going to come up with his name here in dude? a second. Or is it, was it pretty good? He's obviously a weird dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he is extremely intelligent, you can tell. So... Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll Google UFO dude later. I'll, <laughs> I'll figure it out. So it's, it's really, um, I really thought it was interesting that it's kind of very similar to what we were talking about with Elon Musk. It's kind of the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Yep. Um, you know, a couple weeks before this came out, he was, um, Joe Rogan, that is, was talking about basically moving to Texas, right? Yeah. He said this is right when L.A. County announced that they're locking down basically forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, you know, a lot of noise on the Internet about, um, you know, basically the L.A. County Health Department wanting a cure to come out before. Yeah, way uh, to change the narrative on everyone. <laughs> yeah, just completely. Hey, hey, all we want to do is flatten the curve. Hey, now that it's flat, um, we're just going to wait until there's a cure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one's allowed to leave. So that that sparked everything, and you know, obviously Joe Rogan's okay; he can keep doing his podcast, but yeah. all of his friends are not. All you know, it's probably I imagine if you're a comic, it's pretty hard to get you know unemployment checks and and benefits from from the government and things like that. Plus, uh, you can't do what you love doing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know that any comedian necessarily. I mean, there there's comedians that make it big and they make a mm-hmm. lot of money. But most of them start off doing it because they love performing in front right. of people, <laughs> right? And now you're going to – not just taking away their financial benefit, but you're taking away what they love, right? you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I understand where he's coming from. Um, so, but like you said, I mean, this is capitalism at its finest. And the thing that's interesting to me, D, is I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan used to be a Bernie Sanders guy. Yep. So he was almost (laughs) anti-capitalism, socialism, right? Yep. Um, What do you think caused the shift? Being told you can't, you can't work anymore. (laughs) Watching his buddies realize they can't work anymore. And now saying this is, this is ridiculous. That seems to be it, man. It's, uh, I think he just, he couldn't take it anymore. Right. And, and, um, he, he really, the reason I think he is so popular because he's he's not pigeonhole pigeonholing himself into a a certain you know side or a certain type. He just takes the information and boom, gives an opinion on it. Yep. Right? He looked at all the candidates. He said, it, you know, this Trump guy, he looks like kind of a buffoon. Um, the other Democratic nomina- nominees, he didn't seem to like too much. But here's Bernie, at least talking about what he believes in. And and I've said that on this show before. Bernie seems to believe what he's saying. Um, and Joe and Joe liked that. Yeah. <laughs> but once uh, Bernie, uh, it was clear that he was not going to get the nomination. I, I remember Joe uh, Rogan. Again, I'm just seeing clips. I'm not watching the whole thing. But really saying, hey, are, are you guys really expecting me to vote for Joe Biden? <laughs> 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 like, is, is this what you want me to do? It's, you know, I'm not trying to make light of, the, of, of a sad situation, but the guy seems to have difficulty putting sentences together. Just, oh yeah, without a doubt. It just is what it is. Yeah. At, at this point, and um, and this is without an audience with script, uh, a teleprompter script, and everything. And, and Joe is like, 
he's going to call that out when he sees it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so he switched from – he basically told his audience he, was, he definitely was going to vote for Trump over, over uh, Joe Biden. Um, and then during this lockdown, he – took in the information, saw what was going on, and says, hey, these restrictions don't make any sense. Yep. <laughs> Just shutting things down for the sake of shutting things down without any actual data behind it doesn't make any sense. Yep. My friends over here, they want to work, and they can't. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a really interesting shift to see kind of, you know, again, we talked about quite a few times the, the shift from – from kind of a more liberal agenda into, um, I guess, more uh, conservative or more capitalistic, I think is probably a better word for the show. How interesting, man, because the trend six months ago was Bernie and socialism. Yep. Unbelievable. I, I mean, everybody was jumping on that. Every, everyone wanted all their student loans paid off. <laughs> Everyone wants to make a hundred grand a year sitting at home, not working. Right. I mean, everybody jumped on that train. Everybody was, you know, slowly but surely becoming. Now, obviously, we weren't, but you know, a lot, <laughs> a lot lots of people were becoming Bernie Sanders supporters. Mm-hmm. Um, and and for Joe Rogan to be a Bernie Sanders guy, and then to completely say, you know what, never mind. Social or socialism is not the way capitalism is the way Mm -hmm. these, you know, local and state governments are telling us we can't be capitalists anymore. Right. And uh, forget it. You know, I don't care if I don't agree with what Trump says or how he looks uh, or what he does. I love capitalism Mm -hmm. and there's no other answer right now. (laughs) That's that's basically, I think, what he says. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's decided that. He believes in capitalism, and capitalism uh, can only be achieved with Trump. Yep. Right? Um, so I don't necessarily think that he's, you know, a, a diehard Trump supporter where no. he's, you know, going to Trump rallies he's and not, stuff like he's that. Not, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he, he's, a cap- he's a fan of capitalism, which is awesome. Yep. Now, do you remember, did he say that he was a fan of socialism in the past, or did he just like that Bernie Sanders believed the crap that was coming out of his mouth? Yeah, he he was he was not a raging socialist by by any stretch of the imagination, but um, he just felt like he was the best candidate yep. to represent the people. Yeah, so that that's basically was his position. Gotcha. Um, very 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 interesting circumstances here with Joe Rogan, and I think it's great that uh, that he's realizing that capitalism uh, really is necessary. <laughs> for people to, to maintain these these mm. lifestyles. Yep. Now, I mean, so I, I haven't heard, you know, in Hollywood, Hollywood is predominantly left-wing. Right. Even if you're not left-wing, you have to become left-wing if you want to make it in Hollywood. Either that or a Scientologist. <laughs> yep. one, or, one or the other gets, yep. gets you pretty far <laughs> in Hollywood. Um, so when, when these actors can't go back to work and make movies, what's going to start ha- is, are these just the first few dominoes to fall with regards to people throwing up their hands and saying, you know what, I reject socialism. I reject these, these extreme left-wing policies, even if they're not socialism, telling me I can't go to work. All of a sudden, I, I, I realize how important capitalism is, <laughs> and there's really only one way to, to ensure that capitalism remains the foundation of our, of our society. Yeah, I, I think you've already seen it actually with the LA Lakers. Okay, I, I think um, I think that was the first domino to drop because um, it must have been about a week after they announced basically uh, an indefinite lockdown, at least in LA County. Um, <laughs> it was a, it was hilarious. It was straight capitalism, right? Um, they announced the lockdown in LA, right, and then about five days later. Um, the governor in Florida said, Hey, we're open for business. You know, if, if you're, if you are a sports team that is displaced, come on to Florida, we got everything solved. Don't you worry about it. And then, <laughs> and then mysteriously, like three days later, Oh, the Lakers uh, are going to begin to, to open up their facility. Wow. Crazy how that works out. Right. That is amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I, I'm wondering if you're going to see more and more people changing their position like that. Yeah. Right. Uh, embracing capitalism. Capitalism is, it's under fire. 
It really is. I don't understand why. <laughs> I really don't. I, I mean, I think it's just people don't understand capitalism. Mm-hmm. They, they think that all the government intervention— actually, they, they just they disregard all the government intervention, mm-hmm. and then they claim that capitalism is at fault. When in, in my opinion, and I think you feel the same way— all the you know quote unquote problems with capitalism have nothing to do with capitalism. Right. It has mm-hmm. to do with the government getting involved when they shouldn't have gotten in- involved. No question about it. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just look at what's happening in Ohio. Well, let, let's look. Well, let, let me let's back up. So I think it was maybe Washington. There was a salon owner who opened her salon a little too early. It was in uh, Texas. Okay. Well, I think there were a few. Oh, yeah. yeah I think yeah, you're right. Oh, definitely Texas. And then I just saw someone on Fox yeah, who was— You're right. I'm sorry. You're yeah. Right. she. I think she just had a baby, and she mm-hmm. had to open her salon back up. Got fined 14000 bucks. Mm-hmm. right? Uh, restaurants in Cleveland recently reopened uh, kind of through a phased approach where mm-hmm. they had just patios at first. Now they are actually—they're open again, obviously, with social distancing requirements. But, you know, DeWine— you know, kind of flew over top of these restaurants on his uh, murder hornet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he saw that the, that the patios were a little too crowded. And now mm-hmm. he's threatening to fine the restaurants and revoke their liquor licenses. Who does that? <laughs> it's, it's Who insane. puts somebody out of business? That That's stealing someone's livelihood when all they wanted to do was make a livelihood for themselves. Yeah, <laughs> make a living. That's all they're trying to do. Right. It's unbelievable. I mean, what are you going to do as a restaurant with no liquor license? Go Nothing, out of business? That's how they make their money. <laughs> and they're already only allowed to have 20 to 30% of the people in their restaurant, right? right. I mean, mm-hmm. come on, man. Back off. And now they bit. want people to like basically hire employees to make sure everyone is you know, the proper distance. It's just not feasible. You can't do that. It's just... What some of the restrictions that they're trying to lay down, um, they don't. The, when I say they, it's the the, the government, the, the local government here in Ohio. They they're they're making they, they just don't have really good basis for the decisions. Yeah. Like who came up with six feet? Like yeah. where where did that come from? Right. So like if like six feet three inches, we're good to go. But if we're like five feet away, it's ridiculous. I, you know. So you know, I understand. I mean, you know. you, you've you've seen Titanic. <laughs> you've seen it, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, my, my kids they wanted to watch it a couple weeks ago, so this it's fresh in my mind. But <laughs> when Leonardo's teaching Kate Winslet how to how to hawk a loogie and right. spit off the side of the ship, mm-hmm. it, it can go farther than six feet, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you can still catch it from ten feet away. But yeah, yeah it's just it's arbitrary. Right. It's random. Mm-hmm. Right. And. Um, Look, what you need to do is you need to set guidelines and allow people to assume a risk if there is a risk. Yeah, this, that's how we've always lived. Let the people make their choice. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. If you're scared of the coronavirus, just you don't have to go to, to, to a bar. You don't have to go to a patio. If you're in that, I mean, there's obviously a demographic that, that's, that's affected uh, more than, than the younger demographic. We should be protecting them. We should be doing everything that we can for them. But, you know. It, it doesn't make sense to keep, you know, 23 year old, you know, kids at, at a patio bar more than six feet apart. Yeah, I, I just there, I have seen no evidence that 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 is going to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that's going to make a difference. And look, you know, being falsely imprisoned is not fun. No. You know, and, and <laughs> if I happen to go and, and, you know, grab some food on a patio at a restaurant and I see a buddy I haven't seen in, you know, five years or geez, even <laughs> Eight weeks yeah, since we've been locked point. up, you know. <laughs> I, you're telling me I can't go and give that guy a bro hug, you know, the half handshake, half dab hug, him up, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, people need to use their heads. You, you need to have common sense, and the government, the government needs to stay out. Just come up with some guidelines mm-hmm. and let let people work with the guidelines. And you know, if if you know, unfortunately, if if some people pass away along the way they you know again i'm not trying to make light of this but you know the flu kills a lot of people and i'm not you know don't come at me and say i'm calling it the flu right right? (laughs) but you know that certainly happens and what did you you came up with a statistic this morning i think you said the deaths in ohio like 70 percent of them are were Mm -hmm. in nursing homes right which puts the mortality rate at like one gajillionth of a percent yeah it was like point zero i i did the math on my own but 
I just took out the nursing home deaths. And, you know, if, if you live in Ohio and you're not in a nursing home, the chances of you dying from Corona were it was point zero 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 three. Yeah. That doesn't sound very high. No. Yeah. So, I mean, again, we're, we're not trying to make light of this. We're just let, give us some guidelines. Let in, you know, let let us make our, our own choices. Yeah. That, that's really the important thing. I mean, and that, that's what capitalism is about. Exactly. Right. The government is an umpire, <laughs> not a participant. The umpires enforce the rules. They set the rules. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, that's fine. Just give us just give us some guidelines. <laughs> well, and some if, real if you want data. me to wear a mask, I'll wear a mask. Right. OK, I, I don't want to. But if that's going to make people happier, more comfortable, I'll, I'll wear a mask. If that's what's going to take to reopen the economy, that's fine. I'll wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people are fighting it. They don't want to do it. I get it, man. I don't want to wear one either. It's filthy. Mm, yeah. What am I going to wash it every time I wear it? <laughs> like it's, that, that could actually probably get you more sick. I have seen some stuff about that. Like, I mean, you walk, let's see, you go into the gas station, you go to grab a monster cause you're tired or a detox water, <laughs> detoxwater.com. We're starting product placements now. Yeah. We need some sponsorship. So <laughs> detoxwater.com. I'm not hungover. I'm just, I like this stuff. It's got like it's aloe tasty. in it. It's, you know, it's healing hydration. So, you know, send us some money, <laughs> detox water, but you know, you're going into the gas station to, to get a drink and you got to wear a mask and there's a bunch of other people in there coughing, touching stuff, right? You go out, you take the mask off when you get to your car. You don't necessarily wash the freaking thing, right? Like, right. I don't know, man. Uh, masks may actually get you more sick. M- maybe I'm completely. Uh, maybe I. Maybe I, I take that back. Maybe I will never wear a mask again. <laughs> now that I think about it, I've decided against it be- for health reasons. Um, anything else on this topic, or should yeah, we wrap up? So we've probably devolved away from our original <laughs> topic. Uh, what did we start enough. off talking about? Joe I'm Rogan. Not- <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we, we we got into there because you know. Joe had had enough, and and that's really what capitalism is all about, you know. And so he, um, I doubt he'll actually uh, move to Texas, but um, he sure thinks about it. But you know what? It. Capitalism is also about having the ability to flex your muscles, right? Okay. If you don't like what somebody's doing, you need to let them know. I understand what you're doing, but I have a choice. Mm-hmm. I have options, mm-hmm. and if I don't want to keep my business here, <laughs> I will move. Right. If you want to keep me, open your eyes, end the lockdown, be a reasonable bunch of people. And, you know, it's sad to see as well, but, I mean, people are already leaving New York City in droves. And, yeah. I, and, and I don't think those people are, are going to come back anytime soon. And it's a lot of the younger demographic as well. Yeah. So I've got an apartment there. I haven't been there in five months. Oh, geez. Yep. It's not a good situation. No. <laughs> yeah. So at some point I got to go back and get my stuff yeah. <laughs> before the lease is up. Um, yeah. I mean, you're going to see big changes like that, yeah. but you know, the, the, I guess to kind of wrap up the episode, I do like that some people who have pretended, or maybe not pretended, maybe they just didn't realize how great capitalism was mm-hmm. until it was taken away from them. They're waking up. Yeah. I think you're seeing it. And I, I think, you know, I think it's a real, um, this is just my opinion. I think we don't like to talk politics on this show, um, but I think that the Democrats thought this recession coming from stemming from the coronavirus was really going to hurt Trump. Um, and I don't know if it's going to hurt him or help him, but I do really think that the only thing that Americans hate more um, than, than um, Democrat or Republican is tyranny they want to have choices they want to have freedom and when that gets taken away i I think you may be seeing uh, a big shift to uh, maybe even a new political movement you don't even know Um, but but people do not like being told what to do with no explanation and and i just don't think it's going to fly in in america no end in sight because the the end date keeps moving (laughs) they keep pushing it back which is just ridiculous all right man that wraps up today's show if you have any questions info at swpconnect.com shoot us an email there uh d what's the youtube channel uh derek g swp all right so that's all in the notes if you want to check that out as always thanks for joining us and we will talk to you next week